Hi, I'm Nikki, the Obsessive Bookseller. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a wrap up for November 2023 and a TBR for December 2023. I am finally feeling the burnout for having so many books going at once. So over the last month, I've been trying to whittle things down to just like one or two titles going at a time and really bask in those books. And wouldn't you know, doing a deep dive into a lot of these had me finishing quite a few more than I usually do. First up, my patron Dave and I read Children of Memory by Adrian Tchaikovsky. It's book three in the Children of Time series. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another book in this series. I liked it. I think I'm ending up at a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I had a lot of warnings going in that the first half was really good and then it kind of got convoluted and confusing near the end. And normally I don't like knowing anything about books before I dive in, but in this case knowing what to expect actually worked in its favor. Because when things started to get confusing, I didn't trust my retention ability and try to backtrack and figure out where I went off. Like, did I, am I confused? Did I miss something? No, I was like, okay, this is the confusing stuff. Just go with it and try to figure out what's going on. So in that regard, it made the reading experience a lot more enjoyable. And I liked it more than I thought I would. I had a hard time with the second book. It got convoluted and I didn't know it was going to get confusing, so I lost where I was and by the time the end came around I just wasn't invested at all. In this one, I actually managed to retain my investment the whole way through. I like the conceptual stuff that he's doing here and I also really always appreciate the biology component. He's always thinking about world building, the ecological effects people have on new planets, and just all sorts of fun stuff that I love reading about. Now, on top of that, the psychology aspect the mental health of his characters is always in question and I just I think it's great. Whereas this one was nowhere near as good as Children of Time, one of my all-time favorite books. It was a solid installment in the series and I can't wait to see what he does with these characters next. Up for Patreon Book Club we read The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Honoran, book one in the Black Iron Legacy series. I like this book a lot more than I thought I would. It's one of those quick read, fast flowing, lots of excitement, lots of interesting component books. And when you put it down, you're like, I really don't have a lot of very specific things to talk about because it was kind of all one note, but it was a really good note. My favorite aspect was the world building. You have three very different main characters. One of them who's suffering from a disease that slowly turns a body to stone. So he can't stop moving. He's always got to be conscious of his body parts solidifying. Like what a creative idea. And that's not even the weirdest thing that was in this book. But what hooked me is the very first chapter was written in second person and it was from an inanimate object's point of view. I thought that was just so creative. I liked the underground politicking in this world. I liked a few of the unexpected things that happened. Very unconventional storytelling. And I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen in the next book. Very exciting read. Highly recommend this one if you've been eyeballing it. And I've been reading a lot of dense books lately where I have to pay a lot of attention. I was afraid this one was going to be hard to follow, lots of characters. No, it was good. It's a casual read. I think you'll like it. Not so successful with my patrons. I tried Of Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill, book one in the Bound and the Broken series. I was actually pretty enthusiastic when I dove into this book. Had a very classic fantasy feel, nice flow to the writing where you could really bask in the characters and the situation in the world. Very reminiscent of Eye of the World by Jordan, where it just takes a while to get going. The thing here that I struggled with is that the author chose to focus the writing on all the wrong things. Like, yeah, describing this townswoman to perfection added, I guess, to the ambiance of the little settlement they were in. And then something important would happen, like a dragon showing up in the story. And the same care that was taken on describing the mundane things was not taken on the important things in the story. So it just, it felt a little unbalanced in that regard. Because like I said, I finished the book and I can tell you what that townswoman looked like. I can tell you about the feel of this town. I can tell you very few things about the dragon itself. Another thing that knocked my enjoyment off was there were quite a few instances, especially early on, where deus ex machina, where there were too many last minute saves and it effectively took all of the stakes out of the story for me. I'm like, oh, if this is how it's going to go, then anytime something dramatic and almost fatal happens, I'm not going to feel anxious because they'll be fine. And unfortunately, by the end of the book, I was so disengaged that I almost DNF'd it at like 90%. Grain of salt, my patrons liked it a lot more than I did. And then when I finished writing my review, I went on Goodreads and 
kind of scanned through a bunch of reviews from um, fellow booktubers and book reviewers that I admire, and all of them liked it. <laughs> I'm on an island here, and I have here tell that the second one is a huge step up, like so much better, and I might pick it up, but at this point I'm, I'm just over it. We'll see what the next few months bring. I think my patrons are planning on continuing it, so I may join them. It'll get one more chance, but no more. I finished Cassiel's Servant by Jacqueline Carey. This is a prequel companion novel to Cushiel's Dart. Cushiel's Dart is one of my all-time favorite books. It is so beautifully written and elegant and wonderful. And Cassiel's Servant added a lot to that overall picture of a story for me, especially the first half. This talks about Fidre's companion, Jocelyn, who in the story is a religious warrior and very, like, stoic and unamused at the world, essentially. And this gave a lot of wonderful backstory to his journey and gave another view of some of the things that were going on in Kushiel's dart, like the political machinations from kind of an outsider's perspective. It was awesome. There's a lot of internal things going on with this character that you don't really see a lot of in Kushiel's dart that I thought really added a lot to enrich the story because you don't really know. He's going through this inner struggle of like upbringing religious beliefs versus real life and the things that he's forced to face. It's an awesome exploration and I'm glad we got to see like how he came to the decisions that he made in the main series. Now the further along the story got it stopped being more of a parallel telling and more of just like oh we're doing the exact same thing because the characters are together and they're like doing the thing. So the companion aspect of it went away and basically I just read the same stuff I read in the other book and it got a little boring because I already knew where it was going and it didn't add anything. And that was at about the like last 25%. So a good bulk of the book is worth reading. Now I definitely don't think you should pick this one up first even though it's kind of a prequel because all of the beauty of the story is in like the deep rich politicking going on and Fidre's experience with everything and it all kind of like hinges around that character. And so by comparison, this one will feel a little basic, but definitely read this one as a companion and it does ran, run in tandem with just that first book. So if you wanted, you could read that one and then bounce to this one and then continue the series. But overall, I really liked it. Four out of five stars. The author has not lost her touch when it comes to beautiful writing and characterization. So I love that. I finally read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Anybody who has caught a couple of my library TBR projects knows that this one was just on hold for so many months and I never got around to reading it for either project. Well, it finally became available and I dove in and you know what? I really liked it. I didn't love it nearly as much as her natural series. Like that one's on a pedestal for me. But as an initial book, especially for a YA, it was intelligently done. There were a lot of really fun mysteries for these characters to solve. I thought the reveals were really well placed and a lot of fun. The characters were interesting, kind of flat. Like I didn't feel any connection to them or emotional investment, but it was interesting to see how all the pieces on the chessboard played out because this is definitely a game. It was good enough that when I put down the book, I immediately wanted to pick up the next one. And that's always a good thing. I don't feel that compulsory need very often. I love this author. Last I checked, she was a psychology professor at Yale got her doctorate from the same school and all of the things she does they're just they're on the two or three levels higher than the rabble so four out of five star there then finally i read outer order inner calm by gretchen rubin the author that wrote the happiness project this is just a little short book about lifestyle and organization decluttering according to goodreads this is the third time i've read it i picked it up as like a three hour audiobook it's not very long but it's one of my favorites i just really love settling into the mood of it. It always gives me inspiration and it always makes me feel highly motivated. And when I'm reading a whole bunch of dense fantasy novels, I need something where I can feel like I can just breathe and think about something other than dragons for a minute. I really like that one. Five star. And now we get into the currently reading and to be read. So this beast, Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. It's like a 900 page book. My patrons and I are going to be reading this one for the next foreseeable future. This will probably take up the next two weeks of my life, but I'm already, I don't know, like 10% into it and really enjoying it. The author has definitely found his stride here. And I think what he's doing here, the, the conversations that the characters have, they're just so intelligently done. 
I love when characters can have philosophical debates in a book where both sides make sense and then you get a third perspective in that adds to it too. There's an academic feel to this one. I, just, I think it's awesome and it's bouncing off of the first book with all of the same elements but we're following a couple of different characters for a minute and it's, it's great. Um, I remember a video it was either last year or the year before where it was like all of your favorite booktubers and this is their favorite read of the year like five of them picked this book so it's also one that I'm afraid to read because I want to like it so much that I'm like sneaking up on it like oh I better read it really carefully to make sure that I get the most out of it because it's supposed to be amazing sometimes expectations like that can really throw you off but yeah so far so good it is as good as they say still reading A Time of Dread with my patron Katie. We're about 30% of the way through, kind of bouncing back and forth between other things in this one, so we're kind of slowly progressing through it. This is the first book in the continuation series to The Faithful and the Fallen. I thought it took place like a thousand years from the initial series, but no, it's only about a hundred years later. So you've got a couple of familiar faces in there still. You've got a couple of descendants from people in the first set. And I'm having a hard time switching gears and getting into everything that's going on here because I was so attached to everything in the previous series. But it's growing on me. There's a bunch of really fun elements here. I think the characters we're following are a lot of fun. There are quite a few less people to follow. Like we're talking like four or five as opposed to like over a dozen. In that regard, it's a lot more of an easy read. And I think the conflict that he generated is really interesting. I already have some theories early on. And if an author can get me invested enough that I'm making up theories, then we've got a pretty good one on our hands. So looking forward to reading more in that. I am still reading Empire of Silence. I've been reading it for three months. And I use the term reading loosely because I haven't actually been focusing on it. I decided I'm liking it so much that I really want to give it space and a moment. I don't want to just bounce to it every like couple of books and read a few chapters and then bounce to something else. I want to do a deep dive in it. And every year about this time I get the itch to deep dive into a series. Usually it's Stormlight Archive, like I'll reread a couple of books before the like newest release comes out or whatever. And last year I did a whole reread of Lycanius so I could finish out the last book in that series. So this is the one I'm itching to read this year. Once I finish this other chonker, I'm going to get around to reading that one. Which is a good segue in the to be read section. So I'm fully intending to read both Empire in Silence and Howling Dark and a couple of the short stories in between in December. I really like a lot of the elements in this series. I would cram in more books if I could, but I have too many other commitments. So I think realistically I'll only be able to read the rest of the first book and all of the second book in this next month and kind of go from there. But yeah, I like the world building on this one. I like that the character gets kind of beaten down and he's got to use just some intrinsic resources to build himself back up, which is a stark contrast to someone who's been given everything his whole life. So I like that aspect. There's a little bit of arena stuff in here and I love arena stuff. Any element of competition. And I love politics in books. So this one just has so many elements that already get me really excited. And so I can't wait to read on. I'm told that I haven't even hit the best part of the first book yet, so that's awesome. My patrons and I are picking up God Emperor of Dune, continuing our read through that series. This is book four. Most people I've talked to only made it to book one or three. <laughs> I'm really not sure what to expect. The end of the third one took a weird twist and it sounds like this one's focusing all on that weird twist. But so far I'm still enjoying the author's writing style, his unique approach to world building and storytelling, and I'm curious to see when the series will drop off for me. Right now I'm really excited to pick this one up, a little nervous, but I'm gonna keep reading until I'm no longer excited to read it. Which sounds like what you should always do, but usually I just make myself finish the series just to have finished them. In this one I'm okay putting it down whenever I lose interest, so we'll see how this one goes. If you thought Dune was weird, the concept for what's going on to one of the characters in this one is especially weird. So it just gets it just gets odder as you go. And I really don't have a lot of patience for total ridiculousness and we're on we're on the edge. It depends on how he handles it in here, so we'll see. And finally, Mislaid and Parts Half Known. This is an okay, I have an ebook. I'm getting a physical copy in the mail. This should only take me an hour to read. And it has been on my TBR for what, like four months now? 
this is the problem. When it takes only an hour to read, I'm like, I can fit this in anywhere, so I don't have to prioritize it. But if it's not written down, it's not real. Oh, it's happening this month because it comes out in January and I need time to get a review together for the publisher. And it's not like I'm not excited to read it. This is one of those slam dunks. This has to be good. It's got dinosaurs on the cover. So I'm making a commitment. The next time I talk about this book, it'll be because I have read it, hopefully. And then because I have a lot of dense reads going on, I decided I'm gonna pick up Joy at Work by Marie Kondo and Scott Sonnenschein. I, of course, have read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, watched the Netflix specials, basically everything that I could get my hands on about decluttering. I love that genre. I'm even writing a book in it. But this is one that I picked up on Bargain at Book Outlet ages ago and haven't gotten around to, and an audio copy at my library was available, so I snagged it. Now, the thing that excites me most is my work situation. I have an office that I'm the only one in it, like my own room with my own stuff. And so all of these things that I can apply that I learned from this book, I can apply without affecting anybody else. Whereas when I'm at home, you can only do so many things. And no matter how hard you work, it's going to get messed up, whatever. So the idea of being able to curate my office even more is very satisfying. I've already gone through and done like a huge declutter and clean out recently so this will just be like a few more things in that right direction. I think it's going to be able to help me on processes as well. Apparently uh, Marie Kondo's co-author on here, Scott Sonenshin, already has a book out about like work productivity and stuff so if I like what he has to say I've got yet another book to read in the genre. Cool! That's it for the month. I am really excited about the quality of books on my lineup. I left myself a little room for some unknown project books that I'll be working on this month, but for the most part, like, I've got a pretty stacked shelf. Really excited to deep dive into some of these more popular series, and I see why they're popular. They're really good. Let me know what you've been reading, what you plan to read, anything standing out to you. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.